Hi friends, this is the third part of 2016 VSSC Electronics Mechanic Question Paper Solution. So in the first two parts we have solved up to 50 questions and this is the third part. Today we are going to solve question number 51 to 65. So let's start. Question number 51. A given circuit, op-amp circuit is given and the question is we have to identify the we have to identify the which op-amp, which filter it is. The answer is band stop filter. The answer is band stop filter. Now I will show you uh, low pass filter and high pass filter. Uh, what is how we will see the low pass low pass filter or pamp low pass filter so low pass filter it just looks just like a it is just like a inverting amplifier inverting amplifier so inverting amplifier in the input side we will have one resistor that is a ri and parallel to that we will have a feedback resistor this is the inverting amplifier configuration if we add in parallel with the feedback resistor one capacitor then this is a low pass filter this is a low pass filter it's a low pass filter this is the input so similarly we'll see what how a high pass filter high pass active filter looks how what is a how is a circuit so it is the high pass these are active filters because we are using the active elements. So in a high pass filter that is also similar to inverting amplifier configuration. With non-inverting amplifier also we can make the circuit. There is no doubt about it. So here in the resistor, the input resistor path there will be a capacitor. And the feedback path remains same. So this is the uh, this is the high pass filter, high pass filter. So band pass filter, you please check it yourself. So the answer is option D, band stop filter. This is a band stop filter. The next question. Decreasing the gain in the given circuit could be achieved by. So, how can we reduce the gain of this circuit? How the gain is given by what? Gain equal to Rf upon Ri. This is the gain, gain, decider, gain, gain of an inverting amplifier. We can add minus sign also. So, this doesn't matter. We need Rf upon Ri. Rf upon Ri. So, now to decrease the gain, what we can do? What are the things we can do to decrease the gain? The first option is we have to RF value, that's feedback resistor value, we have to decrease. And the other option is we have to increase the RI value, that's the input resistor value. If we increase, if we do any of this action in this equation, our gain decreases. So, the, as per the given option, what is the answer? Increasing the input resistance Ri. Option C. Option C is the right answer. So, question next question. What value of the input resistance is needed in the given circuit to produce the given output voltage? He has given the output voltage. We have to find out what is the value of Ri. Now, what is this? This is an inverting amplifier because see input is applied to the inverting terminal now what is v out v out of an uh, inverting amplifier v out is given by minus of r f upon r i multiplied by v in multiplied by v in now we will put the values what is v out v out equal to minus 3 volt has given what is our minus of what is rf 200k so that is 
200 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 upon ri ri is what we have to find what is the value of v in 60 millivolt so 60 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 now this minus 3 and 10 to the power 3 10 to the power minus 3 and 10 to the power 3 cancels off this minus and this minus also cancels out so we'll be left with 3 equals 200 multiplied by 60 upon ri from here we can find out ri easily so ri equals 200 multiplied by 60 upon 3 so we'll get 20 here 20 multiplied by 200 should give 4000 ohm or we can say it as 4 kilo ohms so the answer is option b 4 kilo ohm question number 54 54 the purpose of cold junction compensation for a thermocouple is why this cold junction compensation is used at 0 degree celsius this thermocouple will get an output voltage to avoid that we use this compensation so the answer is to cancel out unwanted output voltage of a thermocouple answer is option c So here number of address bits needed to operate 2k cross 8 bit RAM. So what is given? It is a 2k cross 8 bit. 8 bit. So that means what? We have a 2k cross 1 byte memory. 2k means what? How many locations? 2 multiplied by 1024 cross one byte so in so many so that means 2048 locations we have in this two for 2048 locations we are going to store one byte of data now we have 2048 locations so how many address line required that is given by 2 to the power n equal to n is the number of address lines 2048 so n equal to number of address lines number of address lines address lines so what is n n equal to 11 11 so the answer is option d 11 see these some values you have to remember that is 2 to the power 5 equal to 32 easily you should be able to say 2 to the power 10 equal to 1024 then only you can solve the question skiply. The next question, question number fifty six. See, we have to to work, work. Normally, what we do, we will just divide one fifty one divided by two and write the numbers. Now, in this question, uh, see, all these are uh, the fraction part. You need not the decimal part. The fraction. This part you need not solve. 151 once is all because all these numbers are different or whatever the the whole number part is different now how to write it so what when you get a question like this what you do you write like this 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 it can go up to 128 only because it is a 8 bit data so now you should get when you add where what of these what are the numbers when you add you will get 151 that's what you have to find so 128 plus 64 you can't add because it will be more than 151 so it will be zero again 32 if you add what happens it become 152 160 it goes to 160 then also we can add but this we can take it as so 128 plus 16 134 144 again 8 we cannot add so it is 128 plus 16 144 148 148 plus 
to 150, 151. So this is the answer. So how do you write? You we'll write it from here. Well, MSP first, that is 100, zero, zero, 10, zero, uh, one, 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 four, four, eight are there total. So which is the answer? One double one zero zero one zero. So option D is the answer. The answer is option D. So this is a quick method to solve it. We can solve quickly. So we'll go to the next question. Question number fifty-seven. In question number fifty-seven, what is the secondary voltage in the given circuit? Secondary voltage we have to find. What is secondary voltage? A trans ratio given. What is trans ratio? N1 upon N2 equals V1 upon V2. That's the trans ratio. So what is N1 he has given? 3. 3 upon 1 equals what is V1? 40 upon V2. So V2 we have to find. So V2 equals 40 upon 3. What do we get? We get approximately 13.3 volt we will get. RMS voltage. RMS he has told already. Now, whether it is in phase or out phase, that's also added with primary. Primary in the output, the secondary voltage is out of phase with the primary because see here, the dot end is here, but here it is here. If it was on top, then it was in phase. So this is a out of phase. So the answer is, what is answer? Answer is 13.3 volt RMS out of phase with the primary. The answer is option C. Option C is the answer. Question number 58. What is the power dissipated in the primary of the, of the ideal transformer in the given circuit? Power we have to find out. Now, for an ideal transformer, power, power input equal to power output. So that means, V primary multiplied by I primary equals V secondary multiplied by I secondary. So if you can find either side, you can side primary side power or a secondary side power, it is going to be same. So uh, now in the secondary, in the transformer trans ratio also he has given. From that, I can easily find out if it is 50 volt here, here it is going to be 250 volt. Correct, it is going to be 250 volt. So now I have to find the power dissipated in the secondary. P equal to P equal to what? V square by R or V square upon R. That means what is V square 250? So 250 multiplied by 250 upon R. R 1 kilo ohm. So 1000 ohms. I'll write it. 10 cancel, 10 cancels. This also cancels. Uh, what is the square of 25? 25 square is equal to 625 upon 10. So it comes to 62.5 watt. So 62.5 watt is the answer. So the answer is option D, 62.5 watt. You can find out either primary side or secondary side for an ideal transformer. Question number 59. What is the power dissipation in the resistor? So we have to find the power dissipation. So here nothing is there. The current is 18 volt due to 18 volt current is flowing through this that 300 ohm resistor. So what is V or P power dissipation equal to? Similar equation V square by R. What is V square? 18 multiplied by 18 upon 300. 300. If I divide this by 3, I will get 100 here, then I will be left here 6. So 66 multiplied by 18, we will get 108. 108 upon 100, we will get 1.08 watt. 1.08 watt. So the answer is option B, 1.08 watt. So we will go to the next question. Question number 60. Testing a good diode with an ohm meter should indicate it all of us knows. Diode when you check when it is forward biased, you should show low resistance, and when it is reverse biased, you should show high resistance. So the answer is option C. High resistance when reverse biased 
and lower resistance when forward biased. Next question. What is the current through the diode? Current through the serial diode. What is the current flowing through the diode? Whatever the current flowing through this, this is a series circuit. So current is going to be same. Whatever current flowing through this resistor will be flowing through this diode also. Now, how do you find the, how do you apply voltage, ohms law here? We are applying ohms law only here, ohms law. How do you apply ohms law here? So current I equal to V upon R, that is about the ohms law. Now what is the V here? Current is flowing like this. So 13 volt minus 6 volt. Because it is here is used as a voltage regulator, it will rain. at this point it is going to be 6 volt divided by what is the resistor value 1 kilo ohm. So it will be 7 upon 1 kilo ohm. That means 7 milliamps of current will be flowing through this serial diode. So the answer is option B is the answer. Question number 62. When a low resistance is connected in parallel with a high resistance in the combined resistance. See in the parallel when in the parallel combination of resistance, the tot, the effective resistance will be lower than the lowest value resistance. So the answer is option. What is the answer? Always less than the low resistance. Yes. It will be always lower than the low it will be lower compared to the whatever the value is there in the combination always less than the low resistance capacitor that can have highest capacitance values that is electrolytic capacitor electrolytic capacitor only whatever the capacitors i have seen the maximum value which i have seen is for electrolytic capacitor Question number 64. After firing an SCR, the gate pulse is removed. The current in the SCR will. What happened? The current, the, the gate pulse is used to fire the SCR at a lower voltage, lower conduction voltage. So once the SCR starts conducting, it will be keep conducting if you remove the pulse also. If you want to turn it off, the anode to cathode voltage, we have to bring it down. So the answer is option A remains same. Now this is the uh, today's last question. So I hope uh, all of you will share with the, share the video with your friends and please like the hit, please hit the like button if you like the video. So let me solve this. Under what condition uh, under the conditions of resonance RLC series circuit behaves as a under resonance this behaves as a purely resistive circuit. How our circuit impedance will be equal to R. So if you draw a graph between uh, what frequency and current, what happens at resonance? The frequency is the current is going to be max. This is going to be the resonance frequency FR, and FR is drawn as 1 upon 2 pi RC. 2 pi RC. So friends, thanks for watching. The, the one more part is left in this question paper. We'll upload it soon. So please subscribe the channel, hit the like button and share with your friends. Thank you.